handles Zadok the priest. <laughs> This is an extraordinary piece, which we're about to hear at the British coronation uh. this coming Saturday when Charles III gets crowned in Westminster Abbey. And Zadok the Priest was first performed in 1727 in the same place in Westminster Abbey at the coronation of George II. And it's been performed in the same place for every British coronation from that date until the present day. So we're talking about a piece that has remarkable durability. The original performance is supposed to have been something of a disaster because it was played in the service at the wrong point. They got in a muddle and one of the anthems got left out apparently and then another anthem got played and ended in confusion. According to a contemporary council, the whole thing sounds, sounds like a total disaster. But even so, Handel's piece seems to have come out of the occasion with its reputation intact and it's remained enduringly popular. And we're going to talk about why, because the music does some really astonishing things. So I'm going to play some of Handel's music on the piano. I realise that this isn't something that Handel himself would have done simply because the piano wasn't invented in 1727, but he would have quite likely played this music at the keyboard because I have a personal sense, playing it myself, that he may well have improvised this at a keyboard. Handel was a great improviser and there's something essentially quite keyboard-like about the way the music works. And what I mean is that it's a sort of prelude. It was a convention in Baroque times that you'd start a prelude by improvising arpeggios. They're sort of like... And it would be a way of warming up an audience and it would also be a way of testing out an instrument in order to see if it worked properly. So you'd go around the, the home key and explore various related chords in a tasteful way and that would be a keyboard prelude and then you'd go on and, and potentially play a fugue or something a little bit more complicated. I was talking about preludes a minute ago. The most famous preludes nowadays, keyboard preludes, are by J.S. Bach. And if you think of the first prelude, the C major prelude by Bach, to the date exactly contemporary with Handel, the two of them were born the same year, 1685. So Bach uh, in Leipzig wrote this. <laughs> journey from that point. So if you notice though the similarity in, in Handel, it's almost the same thing. If he went there, it would be the same thing. He doesn't. And this is where Handel does something very interesting. He immediately begins the harmonic journey in the third bar. So, There's something very beautiful about that, so that you begin the journey, you tilt downwards. There's something unexpected about that tilt. And as you go through Zadok the Priest, one of the fascinating things is that the journey, the harmonic journey, is both inexorable somehow. You're travelling towards something and you know you're going there. But the, the tropes of Baroque style, the, the conventions, the things that you most expect, are very often avoided handle up just springs a slight surprise so the first of those surprises is that marvelous shift there in that third bar <laughs> was that moment where we reach the dominant, we reach chord five, we're sort of, it's as if we're halfway through, and Handel gives us this little, little break, and then the journey begins again, but from chord five, so it's as if we've got to the, the second pillar in the construction. Uh, incidentally, because I'm playing on a piano, I'm actually playing the piece in D flat major, so I'm playing on flat notes, 
And the reason I'm doing that is because D major, the key it was originally written in, in Baroque pitch <laughs> is D flat, if you can get your head around that, because D major in those days actually sounded a semitone lower, pretty much. So we have a, a drop of about a semitone and it feels right to me to play it in the original pitch. So now the second half begins. Uh, Handel's given us this little drop and off we go. They're on A. It's the same as before, but slightly more exciting because we're higher and the movement of the violins is slightly richer. It's that there's a there's actually you've got the first violin and then you've got the second violins just below them. Uh, so you get this beautiful sort of interlocking pattern. In fact, I'll play the two violin parts. Just the two first violins and then second violins. That's this beautiful interlocking pattern, almost like little sort of precious stones, somehow like a string of pearls or something. And as they go along, what you expect is this. And then come the choir. You sort of expect, in other words, the same formulaic set of harmonies that you had in the first half. Handel doesn't do that. He does something much more interesting. So I will play you what he does and point out the moment where, where you're expecting something and then he does this beautiful thing where he shifts away from it. So here we go. We've reached the sort of halfway point. <laughs> Picks up again, D major. And now we are entering the home straight, and the choir come in with the trumpet. So you have this extraordinary moment where he defers the moment of arrival, you go into a kind of darker place and then you come out of it with this sort of very noble diatonic modulation and back in to D major with an extraordinary explosion of sound. Very, very much a calculated moment where the trumpets and this large choir erupt with the words Zadok the Priest. Now Zadok the Priest and Nathan the Prophet anointed Solomon King isn't an enormously exciting line but somehow Mantle <laughs> makes this perfectly prosaic statement from the Old Testament sound absolutely electrifying. And he's drawing together the fact that here's an ancient ceremony from thousands of years ago that somehow has divine relevance now as George II and all subsequent monarchs reach this moment in the service where they too are anointed. So somehow Handel's music makes this strange uh, apparently completely uh, mysterious and peculiar ceremonial event, it somehow becomes electrifying. And I think that's fascinating that, that music can do that. Music can kind of make that meaningful. And there's something about the, the blend of these musical elements, the way that he, he doesn't do what a conventional Baroque composer would have done, which is sort of have that. <laughs> A ceremonial style. This is Handel giving you something mysterious, poetic, and at the same time stately, regal. Uh, but there's a mystery about it, a mysterious journey towards the, the moment when divinity is revealed. I think it's an extraordinary theatrical gesture. One of the great beginnings to any piece of music. Having said that, we reach this moment and then the main section, and all the people rejoice, is a little bit rumpty tum. It's almost like Handel saying, you know, well, there we go, it's monarchy after all. Uh, there's not, nothing that interesting. But, but it's the opening, it's this wonderful sense of expectation at the start that's absolutely electrifying. <laughs> 